Hi, I'm Randa Abdel Fattah. And I'm Ramteen Arabli. We co host NPR's history podcast, Throughline, to help give some historical context to the police killing of George Floyd and so many other Black people in this country. This week, we're bringing you the deep history of policing in America. We wanted to understand how the relationship between police and the Black community had evolved to one so bloody and tragic. So we reached out to this historian. My name's Khalil Gibran Muhammad. I teach at the Harvard Kennedy School. In his book, The Condemnation of Blackness, Khalil lays out a historical argument for how Black people have been criminalized over the past 400 years in the U.S. And he does that by telling parallel narratives about the history of policing in the North and the South. These stories share one key feature, the use of brutal force to control Black Americans. Policing in America started in the mid-1600s with the Boston Watch, essentially a neighborhood watch group. But some of the first police forces in the South were created to control enslaved Black people. They would come to be known as slave patrols. Almost all white men had to serve in these patrols. Their duties were written into law, like this slave patrol statute from Louisiana in 1835. Arrest any slave or slaves, whether with or without a permit, who may be caught in the woods or forest with any fire or torch, which slave or slaves thus arrested shall be subjected to corporal punishment not exceeding 30 stripes. And so the tying together early on, the surveillance, the deputization essentially of all white men to be police officers, and then to dispense corporal punishment uh, on the scene are all baked in from the very beginning. The Civil War eventually brought an end to slavery in America. But for most Black people in the South, it didn't fundamentally change their lives. And by the early 20th century, the KKK would emerge to enforce control over Black citizens in the South. And this pushed millions of Black citizens to flee to Northern, progressive cities as part of what would become known as the Great Migration. Police officers receive African-American migrants uh, in the same way that their white neighbors and community peers did, which is with contempt and hostility. When a white person throws a Molotov cocktail into a new black homeowner on a street that had previously been all Irish or all Polish or all German, the police come and they arrest the black family and defend the white mob. And this happens time and time over and over again. They are policing the racial norms of white supremacy from the very beginning in the North. Black skin becomes equated with criminality. And according to Khalil Gibran Muhammad, the system hasn't fundamentally changed since then. He says that pointing out the problem is clearly not sufficient to fix the system because the problem has been known for a century. The evidence has been presented for a century. The recommendations for change, for holding police officers accountable, for charging them with criminal offenses when they behave criminally. It's a century of the same story playing out over and over again. It seems to me that's what's possible is recognizing that police officers and police agencies are incapable of fixing themselves. And so the question that has to be asked in the wake of George Floyd, and I think this question is being asked and answered by more white people than I've seen in my lifetime is, do white people in America still want the police to protect their interests over the rights and dignity and lives of Black and in too many cases, Brown, Indigenous, and Asian populations in this country. Our whole country is waiting to hear the answer to that question. That was historian Khalil Gibran Muhammad. I'm Ramtin Arablui. I'm Rand Abdel Fattah. You can listen to this full episode of NPR's Throughline wherever you get your podcasts and at npr.org slash throughline.